welcome. I am calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, May 8th, 2023. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, signed into law on March 29th, 2023, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation in public meetings until March 31st, 2025. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the select board chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others, and if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on AAPCMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. Since all select board members uh, are present physically, we will take uh, all votes by voice unless required by law otherwise. Thank you very much. So, the second item is an update on National Grid response to the letter regarding gas leaks. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am going to recuse myself from this discussion uh, due to my legal work for National Grid. Thank you, sir. Enjoy your time out. Thank you. <laughs> and who do we have this evening addressing the, uh, the update? Ms. Boland reached out to me this morning that she would be here, but I don't see any attendees yet. Oh, they, and they were planning to join remotely? Okay. Okay, well, Steve may have a short break uh, for now. So let's go ahead and call him back, and I'll move that item later. Maybe should have checked that before we sent him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can come. <laughs> Steve will be getting his exercise tonight. I mean, Mr. DeCourcy. <laughs> okay, uh, so we'll... we'll uh, postpone that for a few minutes mm -hmm. and updated resolution language for article 64. So the board has before them um, some language that the uh, sponsors submitted in response, I think in good faith to some of the concerns that were raised at the Warren article hearing. And I wanted to give the board an opportunity to comment on those and if it's so Please chose. bring the meeting to order. If anyone wants to we're make a motion here, We're to ready to vote. Voting system that language operation. We entertain that. Any discussion? Motions? My brain's not working. What, what were the concerns? Do we have a rough idea? Well, so I, 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 it was just my typical me, issue with resolutions me, meaning that a the okay yeah yeah, me, yeah. so so. Um, and, and we, I appreciate what, what they are trying to do here. I mean, and I had a discussion with one of the proponents, I mean, and and I um, said that myself, along with you know, the chair, I mean, um, may at some point get in touch with them to help me them navigate I me mean, the state waters, I mean, uh, because essentially, I mean, a lot of stuff that they want to do I mean, needs to happen at the state level. I mean, and I'm fully on board with what they want to do, but but I mean, let's try to really make something happen as opposed to simply doing a resolution, you know. So, so that's it, you know. Okay. And, Mr. Chair, are you just looking for an approval of the updated resolution? Yeah, sorry, and that, the agenda item could have been clearer on that. Um, motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, so on a um, motion to approve by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? As you, a 4 to 0 vote. All right. Next, we have the consent agenda. We have minutes of meetings February, February 13th and 16th, and April 24th and May 1st of this year. We have four outdoor restaurant and retail permit applications Rustic Granola. Uh, the Heights Pub, Sugo Cucina, and Trist. We have a request for the annual Greek Festival, three-day special, one-day beer, one beer and wine license, and a one-way designation of Appleton Place. 
A request for a special one-day all-alcohol license at Robinson Memorial Town Hall by Jamie Fisher and another one at Rotomore Robbins House for a private event by Ellen Lawton. The details of all this are found in the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page and in the Members Notice Agenda. Do I have any uh, discussion or a motion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Dickens. So, so I, I am interested in how we resolve the, the Rosa Granola um, um, request. You know, I'm on board with it, you know, but I do feel that by understanding how we resolve it and how we approach it, we can perhaps come up with what I would call a grand unification parking policy, you know, or set of principles. Because I think um, it was interesting, you know, this was an interesting case. And, 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 and um, you know, people who are on one side of the parking issue in one set of circumstances found themselves on the other side in, in this set of circumstances. You know, I get, I get a lot of, um, I get a lot of talking to some from some business owners in, in East Arlington you know, about my stands you know, on, on on parking, and it was interesting to see that I mean, they felt that this was okay. You know, and and I told them I'd like to kind of talk with you in order to understand I me. Mean, under what circumstances should we do something? You take it way farther. You know, um, and, and so, you know, we don't have to have that conversation now, uh, but I would like it at some point I mean, we could have a deeper conversation about how we um, resolve this I mean, and, and see how it might apply you know, in other circumstances. Because I think, I think there is some real lessons to be learned from how we approach this that can apply. I mean, um, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? And a motion, once again, by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous four to zero vote. Well, it feels like we're all going to sit there. <laughs> yeah. <for a> minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, for approval, Arlington Adult Spring and Summer Softball League lawn sign through May 31st of 2023. We have Mr. Zimmerman. Please come to the microphone and introduce yourself and tell us about this application. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to talk. My name is Ken Zimmer and I've got my, uh, my associate Ed uh, with me as well, Ed Chung. So uh, Arlington Town has for many, many years uh, given the opportunity for men and women to play softball in the spring and summer. Over the years, uh, there has been a decline in participation, particularly on the men of a certain age. We went from eight teams to six to four to two. The league is in, in risk of folding entirely, which would not afford the opportunity anymore for folks to play. We have run booths at Town Hall. We've used uh, the lists that we've had from AYBSA and so on. But what, what we find again and again are folks, and, and I, I'd even ask you non-rhetorically, do you know that there is a men's softball league in Arlington? People tend to say, no, I didn't know about that. So. We would like to use the lowest hanging fruit marketing that we can, which is to put lawn signs in, in high visibility areas, simply saying that we have an Arlington men's and women's softball uh, league. We are open for registration, and we would love to have you participate. We are open to all skill levels, um, all levels of uh, competitive interest. The risk is that we're going to fold, that, that we won't be able to support uh, even another we, we should be playing now. We're not playing now. We are still trying to shake the trees and, and get players. And, and we are hoping that this particular marketing tool will get us 10, 15, 12 players. Great. Would be wonderful. Great, thank you. And just a clarifying question uh, from the materials that were submitted to us. Um, we, in order for us to approve that, we need to approve a specific list of, of locations. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Thorndike, Thorndike Field near the bike path, mm -hmm. the median by Starbucks in the center, Summer Street and Mill, somewhere near Mar Bracket School, and the water tower near the police station by the hockey rink. Yeah, by road, yeah. Yeah, and were those, it, were, is that a, a, an exhaustive list of where you intend to? So we, we were planning on getting five signs, so those are five locations. Those all seem to cover, you know, high traffic areas on the bike path where we would get, you know, Families, parents who would see the signs, mm -hmm. that list. Ed, did anything, was anything missing from that list? <coughs> so that would, that would be terrific. Great. Thank you very much. 
Um, and before I turn to my colleagues, um, a question for the town manager and, and uh, possibly Attorney Hine. Uh, I just want to make sure that we have jurisdiction to give the approval for those locations, and I think some of it will depend exactly where. So I'm happy to refer this, you know, administratively to the appropriate, either the select board office or the town manager for the exact placement. But any, but do either of you have any any input uh, on that question? So, uh, Mr. Yes, uh, please, uh, uh, Attorney Hyde. Sure, if I may. Yes. Uh, so generally, you have uh, recording in progress. Okay. Gentlemen, you have authority over everything in the public way, and um, authority alongside the town manager with respect to like town buildings. The only thing that would uh, might require some supplemental approval is something that's on school property. Okay. And what about the uh, water tower? That's is that MWA property, or do we is that a public sufficient public way for us to just approve? My strong uh, guess is going to be that wherever you're talking about putting the signage. Is probably within the layout of the public way, mm -hmm. um, such that I, I don't. I wouldn't have a concern. There's probably some of that property. I'd have to look at the deeds. That I don't, I don't know if that's the town's property, or the MWA's property, in terms of the actual like center where the tower is. But there's going to be enough um, of the public way layout that you can. Terrific, Mr. Hurd. Motion to approve. I know. One six. I actually think a good spot too is the entrance. So the, would say the Ed Burns Arena. Mm -hmm. We have people coming in that yeah. kids play in the big field, play the buck. Right. So I think that's kind of a target. The answer, is, as a coach of two baseball teams, to your question is no. I did not know we had a men's softball league. Right. Uh, I don't know if you, must guy, if you accept. Middle aging uh, guys that have never played softball before. Well, I stand before you. What, what, what days do you play? Uh, weekdays. Yeah. And you, you, you may have seen us at but we're, we're at Buzzle Field. Uh, there's the co ed, there's, there's a women's team, there's a co ed team in the fall and a men's and women's team in the spring and summer. And it's almost all at Buzzle. We may get some use of the new herd field, yeah. um, but mostly uh, for it this year. At night? 7 o'clock, and then we play an 8 30 game. Yeah. yeah. Nothing more fun than playing under the lights on a summer day with your friends. Yep. Every month. Chairman, join us. Um, <laughs> I'm interested. I'm interested. Oh, that's great. Well, Happy there you go. Then. Glad to be able to support this. Hey, Mr. Herb, were you adding an authorized location to your motion to the, of the Burns Arena? If you have a sign for it, I think that's a good spot. Um, so I think we have either the ACAP. Isn't there something on that? It may not have been specific enough to rule out. The Ed Burns, I think I might have suggested Summer Street you did. by ACAP. So, so that oh, is yeah. that is the same piece of land. Yeah. Yes, quite so. Yeah. Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion. Just a couple of questions, Mr. Zimmerman. On the sign-ups, is this anything done through the Recreation Department or is it directly through your organization on the sign-up? So the Recreation Department helps us with respect to lights, insurance, and other things, but we operate it as an independent group. Uh, so registration would be done through some volunteer administrators. Okay. And, and just to the, uh, Mr. Helmuth's point on locations, I think he had seven or eight in the application. Maybe we're talking ab about five I'm, we're only looking in, in total. Yeah. And, and as I jot it down, you did have the hockey rink. Um, bracket school concerned me a little bit just because that might be a school property. But um, I don't know if you're looking for more specificity on, on that. But I... Just pulling through from your list, and you tell us if, if mm. it's acceptable. Like I hit Thorndike, Starbucks, the median in the center, Summer and Mill, the Water Tower, mm -hmm. and by the Ed Burns Arena. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that acceptable for, for the that five locations? Okay. That would be wonderful. Okay, this so if I could amend Mr. Hurd's motion just to, to add those um, as part of my second. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's probably wise with bracket being, uh, and that's close to the Water Tower. Anyway. Yeah, and sure. I, I certainly didn't mean to imply bracket property. But, but by bracket, you've got the, the you've got the the field there, the Robbins Farm field there. Uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Chair, can I ask an important legal question? You may indeed. But you have to be an Arlington resident. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, we cater almost entirely to Arlington, but when we are honestly, when we are as desperate as we've been <laughs> with teams folding, um, we are probably ninety upwards of, of high ninety percent Arlington uh, men and women. See, this, this folks is, is I'm actually going to suggest the guy in the back of the room. 
He's, he looks like a good softball player. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Attorney Heim. It, really, folks, this is the benefit of having top-rate legal consultation. Uh, for a town. <laughs> I think he's going to be an umpire, though, right? But, I'm sorry, but you cannot wear a Yankees hat to the game. That yeah, is a real question. From where I'm standing, you all look like ball players. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Got a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing vote. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Good luck thank this you. summer. Thank you for your efforts. Next is item 10, appointment to the Conservation Commission, uh, Brian McBride. Hello there, Mr. Hello. We, we meet at last in person. Please come to the microphone and uh, introduce yourself. And if you would, Mr. McBride, say a few words about your uh, interest in serving. I, I'm sorry, could you say? Uh, say a few words about your interest in serving. Yeah, okay, so I've been um, interested in outdoors since I was a kid growing up in Berkshire County. Um, I'm interested in... Uh, uh, waterways and uh, preservation of our natural resources since I worked for a decade or so in the chemical industry selling products that cleaned up water. Um, since I retired about a year ago, I've been trying to get involved in town activities and uh, joined the Open Space Committee with your support a year or so ago. Um, and I've been attending the Conservation Commission meetings for about four or five of the meetings. And the, the commission was very um, helpful in kind of giving me an idea of what the lay of the land was and the responsibilities were. So I'm very excited about the opportunity and happy to answer any specific questions, of course. Thank you, sir. And I've, I've enjoyed some of the discussions we've had in recent in recent weeks on a couple of issues. And uh, I'm glad that you want to be involved. Any discussions and motions from the colleagues? Um, motion to approve the appointment. Second. Discussion? All right, and a motion by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Thank, Thank you again. Thank, Thank you very much. For nothing but. Appreciate it. Item 11, traffic rules and orders, other business, um, discussion and vote removal, taxi cab stands to town. I believe that uh, Mr. Feeney comes to the plate to continue the metaphor. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I, I, I want to say that I suggest, I know that, that Mr. Feeney's been working on this for a while, but I suggested this item tonight uh, in connection with the approval of the outdoor restaurant and retail permit applications, because in some locations, including that in the Heights, um, it does involve the, these parklets, which are clearly very popular and, and economically beneficial, uh, do take away some street parking. And so we've been talking for some time about some unused spaces or, or some unused taxi cab spaces. So uh, Mr. Beanie, of course, unsurprisingly, was already prepared for this and brought this to us with the test material. So Mr. Beanie, if you want to give a summary of, of what you propose and we can have a discussion and potentially a vote. Sure. So thank you, Mr. Chair. It, it did seem timely given the applications that were before you folks for uh, sort of outdoor seating and, and things that may impact parking in our business districts. And, uh, you know, the in particular in the Heights, those parking uh, spots ex uh, exclusively reserved for taxi cabs are really in a prime spot, as are those located in the Russell Common parking lot uh, as the ones nearest uh, Medford Street. So uh, given that, we have seen a precipitous decline in the licensing of uh, taxis or uh, hackney carriage licensees, as we call them uh, locally, I think in 2020, I believe we licensed two individuals, and then that was down to one individual in 2021. And then I think last year, someone may have uh, trickled in mid-year, but uh, beyond that, we have seen no activity or had any requests uh, here in 2023. And I confirmed as of today with the uh, traffic and parking unit over at APD that you know, at least anecdotally, the parking control officers have not witnessed a taxi cab uh, in any period of time that they can remember. So with that, it seems timely. Obviously, the existing traffic rules and orders, though they haven't been amended, they do list, you know, at least 26 taxi cab stand locations. That clearly has been dwindling uh, over time as various projects uh, have been completed, so it seemed like an appropriate time to potentially uh, codify all those changes from years gone by uh, sort of in one uh, fell swoop. So uh, before you this evening is something that 
you know, if voted upon favorably, would obviously be very easy to execute because it is just uh, the removal of existing signs and uh, at least in the heights, we would put up signs consistent with what the existing parking regulations are in that corridor. Uh, so I don't think I have much else to add, but thank you for your consideration. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Feeney. Um, I'll, I'll move that, uh, that the board votes to, to remove the taxi cab stands from our traffic rules and orders as laid out in the memo from Mr. Feeney. And uh, if I could, I'd like to thank him for the follow-up earlier this year when he was at the meeting, but I also want to thank the, the Sharper uh, in Arlington Heights who, who brought my attention to the, um, to the cab spaces in front of the, the bus station in Arlington Heights, and, and um, there, there was further work that Mr. Feeney did, and I appreciate that. And I, if I could digress just for a moment, it is rather nostalgic for me because it, growing up in town, my uncle was a cab driver who was up the heights in the five spots that you see on Park Ave, at 30 Park Ave, it was back in the day, in the 70s, uh, 60s, 70s, 70s, when I was a, a, a young, you could see seven or eight cabs lined up from Park Ave, from the corner of Park Ave Extension and Mass Ave, all the way up to the top of the bridge um, over what was then the railroad tracks. And of course, times have changed, and, and um, it, it, it's not necessary. But if people were wondering where those five cab spots were coming from, those, those were used at, 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 at one time, but certainly an appropriate time to remove them. And, and thank you for bringing this uh, to our attention. I will add, things have changed somewhat drastically in that it wasn't but eight years ago, we were still licensing between 17 and 25 uh, carriages a year, so things have changed rather precipitously. Mr. Hurd. I'll second the motion. Um, I was on TAC when we originally reduced, moved the, the parking spaces, I think around 2016, to uh, create space for the meters, and there was a lot of pushback at that time because there were still a few a fair amount of taxis at the time. And obviously, my office is right now at the center, so I walk through there every day. And I don't remember the last time I saw a taxi there. And uh, so it's certainly, I think, time. And I assume that if a taxi were to sit there at a meter, they could pay the meter, right? Right. So the bylaw changes outlined in the memo yep. remove the requirement for them to necessarily be parked in a designated taxi yes, cab stand. Yep. So that, you know, if, if one did exist, yep. they could stand and ob obey or abide by the existing parking regulations. Yeah, I, I, I think there's plenty of parking for them to find a spot. But again, I, there was a time not too long ago where there were a fair amount of uh, taxis in Arlington Center, but you just don't see them anymore, so. I'm fine with this, of course. Thank you. Good. Um, and I, yes, I like the precipitous decline language, too. That really put me on board. <laughs> well, it's the end of an era, but the beginning of a new one. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Mr. Feeney. On a motion by Mr. DeCourcy and a second by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four nothing vote. Item 12, correspondence received. Concerns regarding high school parking by Liz Riceberg. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to receive and um, send this to TAC. I mean, I'll have a conversation with the, uh, the chair about it. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Yeah. Um, do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All right. On a motion by Mr. Higgins Diggins to refer, to receive and refer, and seconded by Mr. Hurt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And for nothing, vote. Thanks to my very uh, observant vice chair, we do need to loop back around to item two. Um, Ms. Mar, do we have uh, speakers? Yes. All right, so we'll go back to item two, update a national grid response to a letter regarding gas leaks. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, all right, so uh, Ms. Mar, if you'd bring up the, the uh, presenters. Yep. Ms. Boland will be joining us in just a second. Sorry that I'm late. A little bit of a time issue on a computer problem. No problem. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, I just want to report back. Uh, I'm sorry, would you Mark just start introducing yourself, please? Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Ann Boland. I'm with the Gas Leaks Task Force, and um, I'm reporting back from uh, when we had the we reported to the Gas Leaks or to the Select Board on March 13th, and the Select Board uh, passed a resolution at the request of the Gas Leaks Task Force. The resolution to send to National Grid to fix 14 SEIs, significant environmental impact leaks. And I'm here tonight to report follow-up to our resolution. National Grid sent their reply to our resolution on March 28th. They wrote that they've completed the repair of two of the leaks, one on Rhinecliff Street and the other on Joyce Road. They reclassified six of the leaks as no longer large extent leaks and one leak is reclassified as a grade two leak. Per regulation, a grade two leak must be repaired within a year of the classification. Their plan for the remaining five SEIs was that they will be repaired in 2023 or eliminated by main replacement in 2024. So in light of this, we investigated five of the leaks they reported as repaired or reclassified. We first tested the leak at Joyce Road which was recorded as repaired. Our meter registered gas over a large extent of the intersection of Joyce and Ivy Circle. We spoke with a resident of the street who said there have been several trees lost in this location, as well as trees dying on their neighbor's property. She also said she's unable to keep her front windows open because of the gas smell. Based on our testing, this leak has not been adequately repaired. Russell Street had a leak listed as reclassified, we again were able to detect gas over an extended area, and we think that maybe this is really still an SEI, which is probably something we'll need to go back to National Grid about. We were, um, then we went to Medford Street, where there was an SEI that is now reclassified as a grade three leak. We did not detect gas in a large area of this location but we did measure a small amount of gas buildup in a PVC pipe. This report, this pipe came up next to a utility pole. <coughs> this buildup of gas in an enclosed area can be dangerous, so we called National Grid to report it. The leak on Rhinecliff Street was recorded as repaired, and we did detect a little gas, but not a large extent. So we could not definitively detect leaking in the location by the high school, which has been downgraded to a grade three leak. However, a contractor who's been working across from the school for about a year said that he smells gas off and on at the intersection of Mass Ave and Lockland Avenue. Of the remaining five leaks, National Grid has just requested permits to repair four of them within the next four months, few months. So we were told by National Grid that this action on these leaks is a direct result of the select board resolution. The data we receive on gas leaks is somewhat behind. The SEIs in the re resolution are based on older data. Newer data from the fourth quarter of 2022 reported 21 SEIs in Arlington. Sadly, the gas leaks in Arlington are an ongoing problem. Gas Leaks Task Force wants National Grid to focus, as well as focusing on the required grade one and grade two leaks, we'd like the, the, the national grid to focus on these large scale gas leaks because that is best for the environment. Going to these locations to measure gas leaks was eye opening for us. Because of this, we're planning a gas leak safari for members of the select board, legislatures, and members of other boards and committees. We'll go to some of these gas leaks locations and explore the levels of gas odor of gas, examine the health of the trees and the grass. So once we, firm, we make our plans, we'll send invitations if anybody would like to do that. And then we'd like to thank the select board for their action on Arlington's SEIs, and we will continue to work on this issue. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much for your diligence, for your work. This is a, a terrifically helpful report. I'm glad to see the progress, uh, but it's clear that more needs to be done. I would be very interested in going on the tour. So I okay. look forward to that um, as well. So uh, any discussion? For yes. Mr. Dickens. Yeah, thank you. So Ms. Bullen, what did you say that they said uh, was in response to the select board's resolution? 
what was the date that they got back to us? No, no. You said that there was an action that they took that was in response to our oh, resolution. Oh, yeah, that they had just, you know, the the period for um, submitting permits to the to the engineering town engineering just ended a few weeks back, and they requested permits for four of those five large scale gas leaks, and they said that was in their letter. They said that they would work with the, the town engineering department um, to get, get some of those those leaks fixed. So that was a direct action. A direct action linked to what? Linked to the resolution. Okay. I I don't have the letter in front of me that they um, sent with the report of all the gas leaks, but they in it they said that they were going to work with the town engineering department and that they would work at repairing those five unrepaired, that what they thought were the five unrepaired gas leaks. So what's, what's going to happen with the, um, the leaks that they say are fixed and we're saying that they're not? Well, I, that's a good question. We haven't really had a meeting to discuss that since we went out in the field. Some of us went out in the field to, to uh, test those. So I think that that's going to be the, our next. Um, we're just going to ha we're going to have to come up with an action. They, you know, they do have a representative that we can contact, uh, who they told us about in the, in that letter. Um, so we can contact that person. We're going to we're going to have to come up with a plan. Okay, that's fine. Well, yeah. Well, let's keep um, let's keep working on it. You know, um, okay. and, um, so so. Um, Great. I really appreciate your, your efforts on this. I mean, and, and um, yeah, uh, let's keep working on it. I'm not sure I'm going to go on the safari, but I'll, I'll, I'll help out in, in other ways. You know, so, and always feel free to reach out to me, um, email, phone, whatever, okay? Okay. Thanks, Len. You're welcome. Any other questions? Do we get a motion? Yeah, motion to receive. Motion to receive. Second. Second. Yeah. So we have a motion received by Mr. Hurd and Mr. Diggins. Any discussion? Welcome, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mrs. Mahan, did you want to uh, engage on this particular item before we finish it up? We were on. We're, we, so we finished everything, but we're back to item two. Uh, to speak of the, uh, the gas leaks. No, I apologize. I was on an expedite all day. I had 7:30 in my head, and I apologize to everyone. Glad um, to see you. Being late. Thank you. So a motion by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. Dick, and this is just a motion to receive. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed is a four, nothing vote. Comes Mr. DeCourcy. All right, that leaves new business. Uh, Ms. Mark. No new business, thank you. Attorney Hyde. No new business, thank you. Mr. Pooler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just uh, one bit of new business. Uh, I became aware that there was some concern about some remarks I made uh, at town meeting regarding civil service. So I would just like to say that I'd like to apologize if I did not express myself clearly about how the town hires veterans and the impact of moving away from an absolute preference uh, for veterans under civil service. I know that some of our best employees here in town and that I've worked with in other places are veterans and their experience in the military will often make them very attractive con candidates to consider. Uh, we are seeking to diversify the department and a move away from the restrictions of civil service. Veteran status warrants strong consideration for a candidate, but it should not be the only consideration. That is my position, and that is the chief's. And in fact, within the police department, there's a lot of conversation about changing our police departments from having a warrior mentality to a guardian mentality. And in that regard, uh, I think it's important that there are sometimes uh, people coming out of a military background who want to maintain a warrior mentality. And uh, if there are other candidates that are equally qualified, I think we should have the ability to hire those other candidates. Uh, I would also say that this has been uh, the position in town since 2011 when we changed the hiring status of our DPW workers uh, and took them out of uh, the civil service process. We still do hire veterans in DPW, uh, but we don't give them an automatic uh, preference. So if my previous remarks caused any 
discomfort or confusion, I am sorry for that, and I just wanted to put that on the record. Thank you very much. Thank you. And any other new business, Mr. Court? Thank you, sir. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Oh, that's, that's quite a segue to follow into. And when's the apology for insulting the police department, and who are these warriors that we have? Um, I'm wondering what you mean about insulting the police department, uh, because I don't believe I did insult the police department. You, you just said that the police department has uh, warriors on it, and they have a warrior mentality. I'd like to know who you're referencing. Similar to if I said, you know, why didn't somebody get a job who was qualified? Unfortunately, it was a woman and has been doing your job for two years, and the person who got it was a former student of yours, which I don't know if that happened in Amherst. But who are these warriors? What I said was that the police department itself has conversations all the time about trying to be a department not of warriors but of guardians. That's, if you ask any of the police officers, the training they've gone through, the conversations they've had, um, all have to do with having a police department that is more community friendly and doesn't have a kind of warrior mentality. I think we've seen that in other parts of the country. Um, it's not the kind of police department that we have here or want to have here. So it's not that I am bringing that up as an issue. The police themselves have brought that up. The other issue that you brought up um, about uh, hiring the deputy manager, who was a former student of mine, and the implication that I did not hire somebody because she was a woman, I think has no basis in fact. I have long hired women. I have had many women work for me. My mother was the breadwinner winner in my family. So I resent and disagree with your insult to me about being sexist. So, Well, I, I'm just going by the conversation you had with me when I queried you um, how a certain individual got a job. And what I wanted to say with my remarks is something that I was told when I first got on the board and I believe very strongly in is that I represent the town of Arlington as does the town manager thankfully just till July 28th. Um, my words ha carry sometimes a louder voice um, and I have to be cognizant of that and I unfortunately have noticed a, in my opinion I'm speaking for myself alone um, I've noticed a pattern where um, the town manager uh, says negative detrimental remarks about Arlington, Massachusetts and, and our employees. Um, and, uh, you know, I understand, you know, may have a friend in Minnesota or, or whatever and then tries to buffer them by saying, but of course I'm not saying that's happening here in Arlington. I strongly disagree. I'd love to see the staff de development. Um, course or conversation that says let's discuss Arlington's warrior mentality. Um, I originally wanted my remarks to be um, the fact that you have insulted many veterans. Um, I'm assuming you're not going to Memorial Day because to have someone getting up representing the town who says the classic, oh, thank you for the sacrifice serving in armed force, forces, which is a military. Um, we can't thank you enough. We don't know how to on the cusp of um, we shouldn't be hiring these warriors and warrior mentality on the police force. And I would just ask you, um, besides not being at that event, that's my personal opinion, um, because I think that's false, uh, just platitudes for you to, whatever remarks you might say in light of your feelings, stated at town meeting, um, and again here tonight, um, to talk about veterans, can't thank them enough, we don't know what we can do for them, but you certainly have proven otherwise. Um, and I've become very concerned that you have gone to town meeting um, and represented views and policy decisions that you haven't even informed the board of. Um, I do appreciate the email today regarding Poets Corner. That's something that I would expect to happen so that I'm aware of it. But there have been other things that I'm hearing for the first time, including this uh, conversation, what it's rooted in, which is the presentation that was given to me at the select board meeting regarding civil service and uh, your request for the opportunity to go to town meeting to talk about taking it out of civil service, where you incorrectly said Burlington got 300 candidates, they got 41. Um, 
but there was nothing represented about um, how we're going to uh, exclude, besmirge, and speak of the negative implication of anyone who's a veteran because of their warrior mentality. So um, I just hope going forward that, that that will stop because, I mean, I've had people come up to me and said, were you where the town manager was, had made this policy decision and had decided to do this? And I said, no. Um, and that's something I, other town managers, of, and as you did today, the demonstration with Poets Corner, um, that's something that, you know, I should have been apprised of as a member of this board. And please, I beg you to please stop slamming and besmirging um, the town of Arlington in your final days, whether it's what happened to your friend in Minnesota, uh, the warrior mentality remarks, because your, your remarks do carry great, great weight. And, and, and I've learned, even sometimes when I've wanted to advocate for someone, I check with them first because sometimes I found out, find out in my zealousness to support them and advocate them, I might do just the opposite because what I feel my words would be saying aren't exactly what they would be. And I think in the current times we've learned about that. We need to really think about our words and think about others and think about their feelings um, before we throw around um, and you topped yourself. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to come right back at me with a, a, a good offense as a defense, but I, I, I really don't want to hear anything more from you on this because I don't know who you're going to besmirge next before you leave on July 28th. So, um, and again, my apologies to my colleagues and Mr. DeCourcy. I had an expedite. I had 7.30 in my head, and I apologize for that. And I'm assuming on the parklet that that was approved for Rosa Granola. Thank you, because I'd like to be registered in, in support of that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, so, if I might. Yeah, Mr. Rule, in, in, in just a moment, I, th I think, you know, the better, uh, my colleague, and, and just to be clear for the, for the public that in new business, the, the board does not demean amongst itself new items that are, be, uh, are, are brought up, but, you know, there's nothing improper about, about uh, the question and answer here. I, I would, I do think that, you know, my colleague has raised a number of concerns about the town manager performance. We oftentimes raise those concerns in private and if we don't in public um, when we evaluate the town manager. But given that a, a number of, of new um, concerns were just voiced, I want to give the, the manager any opportunity, if he chooses, to respond to any specific complaints. And then I would suggest uh, a private conversation, I think, to resolve those concerns would be most appropriate. And, and if, I, if much, I could Mr. add to Chair. that, I mean, normally it's not a back and forth colloquy. And I was going to say, I will endeavor myself again to meet with the manager. I did come in Thursday morning, um, and he was not in the office, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, so, And I don't think it should be this back and forth. He's had his say, and I've had my say, and I've indicated I don't want to hear anything more from him in front of the microphone because I am a bit fearful what will come next, and I think it should be done a personal meeting between myself and the manager. But you're the chair, it's your call. We can keep going back and forth. Thank you, I'd like to give the manager you know, one, one more opportunity, given, given some very specific concerns that were, that were raised. And it's up to you, uh, Mr. Puller, if you, if you prefer not well, to, that's fine. The one thing I would like to say, uh, Mrs. Mahan made reference to a comment I made about a friend of mine from Minnesota. I made those comments not besmirching the town, but telling the story about how he as a young black man, uh, uh, had grown up in Minnesota, and when he and I were in law school together, we were just talking about being pulled over by the police. And I said, oh, I've been probably pulled over by the police three times in my life. And he told me of the dozens of times as a young black man in Minnesota that he had been pulled over. I think that is an appropriate story to tell. It does not besmirch Arlington. It is a story about racism in America. It was a story that I told during our DEI training with our staff. If people think that is an insult to Arlington, then I think they have to do some thinking about what racism is in this country, how we all fit into it, and what different people's experiences have been. So I like working for Arlington. I think it's a great town. I like working with this board, all of you. I do not go around saying negative things about the town. Um, and with that, I will conclude my remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pruitt. Mr. Hurd. So I'll go to my easy new business first. <laughs> um, if two buzzle feel related, 
things that came up yesterday when I was at Buzzle Field. I like, I don't know, I guess the train high, if this is something we could do, if there's any in the bylaws that prevent this. But the parking in what I believe is called the railroad lot, right behind Buzzle Field, there's permit parking there. And my guess is, is that the, per the people that use those permits, however many there are, they park there during the day and they either work in town. Because if you go there around 4.35 o'clock, there's no cars there. And I guess my question is, is it advisable or legal for us to have a situation where it's permit parking until, say, 5 o'clock? And this might, might have arisen out of a ticket I got the other day. But that said, <laughs> we've had, I try to be funny, but we've had a lot of discussions about parking on Summer Street and safety concerns with people crossing the street. Because when you have a baseball field, base, baseball game, um, soccer game, parking's tight in that area. And people end up parking all throughout the neighborhoods there. So the, perm, the parking, permit parking spaces right behind Buzzle seem like they're in high demand and they're never really used by anyone. I don't see, at least we could do a parking study, but I don't see any permit holders that are taking up those spots. So I'd like to at least look into whether or not we could have a pro, uh, some sort of a program where it's permit parking till 5 o'clock. I don't know if that requires a specific permit for that lot or not. But So I'm, I'm happy to look into the issue further, but as a general rule, I would say that the board has the ability to set uh, specific rules for specific lots. Yeah. I'm not aware that we have done that in this scope, but clearly we have metered lots. We have spaces that are utilized differently. Um, so I can look at, you know, how that way might be structured for you. Yeah. And then this is the easy one, I think. On the other side of Buzzle, I noticed yesterday, as you pull up to park, there's parking all along Buzzle Field on Summer Street, and there's a sign that is supposed to indicate no parking here to corner, and it says no parking anytime, which is a little confusing because you can park beyond the sign. So I think that sign just needs to be... And this isn't really an... Okay. That you, <laughs> I think that sign just needs to be changed to no parking here at the corner. Um, I did, I keep meaning to say this, and I was at the rink again yesterday, so I just, I wanted to, now that the, everyone knows I spend a lot of time at the Ed Burns Arena in the winter, um, and I did, as the season wrapped up, I was on the concrete yesterday, so the ice is gone. Um, I did want to, commend the director, the recreation director, Joe Conley, JJ, the rink manager, who's been on the past couple of years, and his team. I've been in, I spend a lot of time in rinks all over Massachusetts, and the Arlington rink is by far the cleanest, most well-run run rink in the state that I've ever been in. And that includes a lot of very new rinks. And so it's certainly a credit, a testament to the staff there. And you'll go in there, and they're mopping the floors while, while you're there. So you know they do it. And it really is, I'm sure Mr. Cross, you remember, there were times when the Arlington Rink was not the cleanest rink in the Massachusetts. So I did, as a, we put a, close the book on one season, I, I do want to commend uh, Joe Conley and JJ and, and their staff. Um, I'll be brief. <laughs> I think Mr. Pooler, I, as you began your statement, I was happy to hear it, and I think it would have been wise to stop after a couple of sentences. Um, and I'm, that's all I'm going to say on that. And I, I'm just going to say, in general, my feeling is that veterans make for excellent officers. I don't. I know many officers who are veterans in Arlington and in other jurisdictions. And I don't know any of them that have a quote-unquote war, warrior mentality. Um, and I, at times I've mentioned specific officers by name, and I think they know who they are, that some of the, the veteran officers that I know are the most community-oriented officers in all town who actually use their time outside of when they're paid to serve the community and go to schools and... and um, and help you know, do, do events for, for children in town. And 
I think there's a lot, uh, when I think of a veteran, I think of someone who knows duty, discipline, who, um, you know, um, police officers, as part of the job, when you, when you come on, you have to be the person that runs into danger. And if you hire a veteran, you know somebody that, that will do that. And I don't see veterans or people in the military of the people I know personally are people that go to go and shoot people on the battlefield. And the warrior mentality sounds like, to me, that's how I perceive it. And it's not how I see veterans. And I see immense value in veterans serving in any capacity in this town. And I see, think, um, I mean, I would support any comments that were disparaging to veterans. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it, it just briefly, I um, coming to the period of time in the, in the year where the Verizon will be submitting its semi-annual double poll report to the Department of Public Utilities, Department of Public Utilities, and uh, I am going to ask the chairman, or I spoke to the chairman about putting an agenda item on soon about the double poll issue. I happened to be down by the Walgreens in East Arlington over mm -hmm. the weekend, and the double poll on Adams Street, which was first raised at a board meeting here in November of 2020, then again in November of 2021, is still a double poll, but in, in, in fact, it's in worse shape now because the top of the original poll is secured in large part to the new poll with a rope. And um, it, it, it's secured at the bottom, but there, there's been more charring. And, and uh, again, this is a 90-day requirement, and it's, it's, it's about two and a half years since since we raised it at this meeting, not, not since it was a double poll. So I, I've asked the chair if we can put an agenda item on um, to discuss and, and perhaps take action. Um, I know there are some requirements that Verizon has with other equipment that they place in town in terms of upkeep, in terms of some of their 5G equipment. And I think um, we're to the point where what else can we do every, every year or so we raise this issue and we're told there's going to be talk about it, there's going to be discussion with the other carriers who, who aren't doing anything. But meanwhile, this, this, this poll gets worse and worse and the fact that they went out there again to change what was a secure, a more secure connection to a piece of rope, or a little bit stronger than a piece of rope, but it's tied, um, I think is absolutely ridiculous. And, and I think it, it, it again, to me, the fact that this has not been taken care of, given the numerous calls, and, and Mr. Kula has reached out to Verizon, Mr. Chaplin reached out to Verizon in advance, and we're always told it's somebody else's fault. Well, after two and a half years, I, 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 my patience has run out on it, and um, I, I, I think you know, they, they should be notified, but I'd, I'd like to see some sort of discussion on that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Corsi, Mr. Mr. Chair, Thank you. could I just add something to oh, that? Yeah, Mr. Pooley. So uh, it was about a week or a week and a half ago that one of the other companies changed its equipment. I had written them. They got back. They said they had changed it. I then wrote back at the end of last week asking, all right, who's next? I have not heard back. It's always very slow. I just want to say that I think one of the reasons you may have seen a difference there is one of the companies did make some progress. So, uh, yes, it's a, been a ridiculous ongoing problem. This particular poll never made it to the official list, and I think that's one of the reasons that it's taken so long. But um, I will continue to work on that, and I, I would say the board should too. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dickens, and my request may be for um, next agenda. I, mean, I think we talked about it you know, a few weeks ago. You know, is um, I'm going to do that rewrite you know, the parking um, policy for overnight. So let's try to um, have that discussion and maybe I can weave in some things that Mr. Um, uh, Heard brought up. You know, um, it'll be the rewrite. It'll be the first time that you all will see it. I mean, but hopefully you know, we can get far enough you know, that we can make a decision and I may need to do some more revisions, but if we make a decision and it's a go, then we can start working you know, um, to you know, roll this thing out if we get into July. And, um, and then I'll just add you know, one other thing. It's just, um, I know that sometimes the differences amongst us seem great. 
but we're really all on the same page. I mean, it's like, this is a really good town. I mean, I mean, and so just keep that in mind as we, you know, sometimes get a little tense about things. I mean, we are much more in agreement about the, the big things, I mean, um, than we are uh, in, in disagreement. So, so, you know, that's all, you know, so thanks. Thank you, sir. And I have no new business other than to wish everybody uh, in the spirit, perhaps, of Mr. Diggins' remarks, a productive, constructive town meeting session. Do I have a motion to adjourn tonight's session? Motion. So, no, second. And discussion? A motion by Mr. DeCourcy, second by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. See you tonight.